9.30 a.m. local there, there has been an earthquake of a magnitude 7.0. This is a major earthquake. We're getting some of our first pictures of some of the damage that we've seen here. You can see just uh, food strewn about uh, in, in, this, uh, in this eating establishment. We've also seen reports um, and we've seen video from the local TV station. You see some here, windows blown out, the glass just blown out of these windows. This is major. I want to bring in Allison Chinchar. Allison, you've been monitoring this uh, from the moment that we first got word that this had happened. Uh, and we're also looking at pictures here of a school. We've heard from uh, some witnesses that this is something that it just felt like it went on forever, Allison. Yeah, and that could also be in turn because we've had multiple aftershocks. We've already had five large aftershocks. That doesn't even take into account some of the smaller ones. The highest one was a 5.8, and that one is actually the one that impacted downtown. So you actually probably have some buildings that sustained more damage from that 5.8 aftershock than they did from the initial quake. Now, part of that is, again, when you have an earthquake the size of a 7.0, that is going to structurally compromise a lot of the buildings. Any aftershocks after that likely to do even even more damage. Again, all of those red dots, those are the ones you see. Those are the aftershocks. Now, in terms of the overall scale, the main concern still going forward is this tsunami warning. It is a very localized threat. It only impacts the Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula. Again, these main areas right around where that 7.0 was. If you live in those areas or know people that do, get to higher ground. Those waves of tsunamis can come in relatively quick every five minutes. Sometimes they can be intervals as much as 40 minutes, but you don't want to take that chance. You're seeing damage there on the screen from some of these earthquakes and aftershocks. Those aftershocks are likely to continue. So more damage is possible, um, especially you heard one of those reporters from the local affiliate saying, turn your gas off if you know how. Turn your water off if you know how, because that will help protect your home in some of these subsequent aftershocks. Now, one other thing to mention, the, the USGS has put out that they expect this to be a yellow pager. This is in terms of economic impacts. They expect it to be a yellow, about a 35% chance that you're going to have some significant economic impacts, most of which, in this case, Brianna, is likely going to be that damage to buildings, roadways, things like that. We also had word that there's issues for people getting to the, the international airport there as well. Yeah, and we saw a picture of an off-ramp that looked very damaged. There was some concern from the local reporters, actually, for the safety of a motorist. So we're going to continue to monitor that. Um, Allison, stay with us, because I want to bring in Nick Watt. He is monitoring this from the West Coast. You are there uh, in Los Angeles monitoring this. What can you tell us? Well, listen, as Alison said, you know, there could be more damage created by the aftershocks, but also we still don't know the extent of the damage from the original quake, which was just before 8.30 in the morning, Alaska time, and those subsequent aftershocks going up to 5.8. Now, the actual first major earthquake was about five miles northwest of Anchorage at a depth of about 25 miles. Now, we've seen on social media a number of pictures of, you know, pendant lights swinging, windows smashed, but people are still assessing. Now, we just heard from the Department of Transportation up there in Alaska. They say